thank you all. Uh, yeah, so <coughs> my name is Bjorn, you have contact info there if you want to. I'm going to talk about non-type template parameters, uh, NTTPs, the, they're usually called. And uh, this is something that is, has been talked about a, a bit in the last few years as if it was something new, but it's not. Uh, not really. Uh, if we look, for example, we have been able to do something like this. Uh, So, n here is not a type, it's a value, it's a, it's a number. So I can say uh, int comma 3, like so. So now I have uh, instantiated this array using a non-type template parameter, the, the n here. This has been in C++ since before C++ was standardized. Um, so this is not new. And by the way, this is basically how uh, StudArray is implemented, pretty much. There are a few functions also. But what has happened, there has been a little bit of an evolution with this. Uh, in C++17, we got one tiny, tiny, tiny new thing. Oops, sorry. We can write out of there. So now it deduced that since I wrote three here, n is an int, I could write three u and then it's an unsigned or whatever. whatever. It doesn't really matter in this example, but that's it. That's what happened in C17. It's, it's not huge, but it's not, it's not nothing. There is a value in there. But then came C++20 and things actually changed for real. Because what I can do then is I can do, I can have a length uh, that is like so. Okay. And then I can say that actually this parameter, now I have to do like that. Now this doesn't work, but yeah, it's compiled. What happened here is that the, 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 the compiler accepts this struct length as, as a non-type template parameter. So it, it, it is used as, as a value. And the requirement on such a type as, as length in this case is that all data members are public and that the data members themselves are uh, of a type that can be an, an, an NTTP. And with this, you, you, can, you can express a little bit more meaning in your template parameters, the, the non-type ones. But it's more. There's more than that. Uh, yeah, oh, by the way, a, a really important thing. Um, <laughs> when you use these types as NTTPs, uh, the, they are considered equal, so to denote the same type, in this case, length 3U. Uh, they are considered equal if the values of the data members are the same. You can, you can write a, an operator equal equal if you want to, and it, it will do bugger all in this case. It, it will look at the data members. So if you want to do a fancy, say, case preserving but case insensitive string, it will not work. But there's actually a little bit more. We can do... Uh, Like that. This is a little bit curious, isn't it? I had said length here. I had not said length of size t or of unsigned or something. 
the, the compiler deduced that since I had said length here, then t must be something that works with the, with the construction, with the, uh, with the type deduction. So it, it must be able to deduce what, what it is and it can in this case. What is a little bit unfortunate with this is that it can do this. What was kind of cool with this is that we get a, some sort of type safety on our, our non-type template parameters, but here it, it's not there. I can do just anything, so uh, that is boring. But no, since it has a, a constructor that is explicit, this doesn't work anymore. Now I have to be explicit. So I have to be able to spell these complicated words. Yeah. Like so. So now the code is a bit more expressive. We say that what, what, what we mean with this three, that it is a length, that is its meaning. Uh, you can use uh, also deduction guides here if, if that is important. Uh, and in fact, yeah, let's do that. Let's do, a, let's do a somewhat fancy thing. Uh, I can be explicit about what I want, no deduction. Uh, Like that, now I need a constructor. It's more difficult to type when people are looking at you. <laughs> like that. Uh, So, almost there. Uh, now I need a deduction guide. So, uh, if we see a string being constructed from a something that looks like a, a string literal, then we want to create a string of. Uh, of this length. So why is this useful? Well, I can do something like uh, I have a function here that doesn't take any arguments. It's just a template and I do puts s dot data because why not? Hey, where did I go wrong? Ah, uh, yes. It needs to be const expert. And uh, minus sign that really doesn't belong there. No. Okay, this is a bit curious. <laughs> now, if you're a super amazeballs person who, who, who writes uh, glorious code like Hanna Dushikova, you use this to, to parse strings, to write code for the parsed strings like her the, the CTRE, the compile time regular expression library, which if you use regex, you really should use, by the way. Uh, so you, you can write a, a DSL that is parsed right away like this. It, at compile time. There's no runtime overhead in this. That is amazing. 
Uh, if you're a, a more normal mortal C++ developer, you don't do Hana Dushikawa stuff. You, but you can still use this for making your template code more expressive, for getting the, the type safety that you, that you can use, that you do get with your normal runtime functions where you use the type system to express what a parameter means. Because you, you do use a type system for that, don't you? you? You don't have functions with plain ints, right? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, so you can use this to get the same type safety with templates as you can otherwise. And uh, that was really all I wanted to say. I just want to add that yesterday evening I released a new version of my strong type open source library that now handles that all types that you instantiate can be used as NTTPs, providing that the underlying type can be used as an NTTP. So that makes it more easy to compose the types that you want to use. And that is all I wanted to say. Thank you all and ask questions if you want to. All right. Yes. Why did you copy n length minus one instead of just copying the alternator with it? Uh, because uh, I, yeah, I could do that, but I don't want to rely on there being a null terminator. Sorry, the question was uh, why, why, why did I use copy n and explicitly null terminate instead of relying on the string being null terminated. And in, in the use case that I, that I showed with the deduction guide that will almost always work. It, it will definitely always work when you write a string literal. But if you gave it a naked uh, global array of const const chars, the, those may not be null terminated, and this ensures that I get a null termination. So you want to delete the character. Yeah, yes, exactly. I just delete the presentation where. <laughs> uh, other questions? Yes? How do you ensure your types are, can be used with NTTP? Do you use like in type squares or differentiate ones to work? To, 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 to make sure that you keep them in the future? Yeah. How, how do I ensure that the types I, I use as NTTPs continue to be usable as NTTPs? Uh, as with everything I want to ensure for the future, I write tests for it that, that are run. And in this case, the test can be instantiate a template with this. And it will, if it fails to compile, I have obviously broken that uh, assumption. Yes? Uh, just wonder if template templates run, are those non-type Are template templates uh, parameters non-type non template parameters? Ah. Uh, they, <laughs> I guess you can, I, if you take the, the words literally and compose them, then the answer is yes, but that is not the normal meaning. I, I don't really like the term non-type template parameters in this case, because I, I think the importance is not about them not being types. The importance is about them being values, in my opinion. But that is the term that has been chosen. Can you say that again, please? Like why are they using the value comparisons instead of like the why, why are they using uh, val comparisons of the values of the instances, uh, of, of the member variables, instead of relying on, say, operator equilibrium? Uh, I don't know. Timur? Well, one, one reason was that you will be a, like then call into arbitrary code while compiling. So while compiling your code, you need to very quickly be able to compare, are two types the same? For example, to know if you want to instantiate a new template or not. Um, but then, if you need to call into some const expr equals equals operator somewhere, that might grind down your compile times to a halt potentially. So, wasn't seen as a good approach. 
Okay, so I, I will try to repeat a little bit for the recording. Uh, so th Timur's uh, answer to the question was that you you don't want to call arbitrary const expert code when t when comparing if, if uh, two two instances are, are have the same value because it, it may take a lot of time. Sorry. The same type. The same type. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that is. I don't know if it's the reason, but it's a reason. Yeah. I think it comes down to, if you think about how to mangle these names, you, if you don't know how to compare them, you, you need yeah. Mangle's name to be unique. Yeah, uh, Arvid's observation was uh, about the name mangling, the, the, the making sure that you know what the, what the members are and that you rely only on those, then the name mangling becomes sort of trivial. Uh, comp uh, unlike if you use some arbitrary comparison instead. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about the potential overhead. Say you read many thousand lines of yeah. strings from a file. And just, okay. yeah. uh, yes, the eternal question about overhead. Um, you, to begin with, with the overhead we're talking about is compile time overhead. There's no runtime overhead. There's no code generated for this. Uh, the code. The, there can be a runtime, a compile time overhead with this, absolutely. However, it depends also on uh, how good you are as a developer. So if, if you are a superhuman like uh, Hanna Dushikova, whose uh, uh, compile time regular expressions builds faster than any other regular expression library that does things at runtime, then it, it's not necessarily a problem. But uh, on, on the other hand, back to <laughs> If you are a mere mortal C++ developer, you probably will have overhead. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>